Hello, welcome to St. Peter and St. Paul United Church of Christ. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. We're so glad that you've tuned in and you are worshiping with us today. We welcome you as we uh, gather together uh, for our virtual worship. And we're in the chapel at St. Peter and St. Paul United Church of Christ. And with me here is Joel and Mary Beth and Aaron Westermeyer, our video production team. And we thank them for all of their hard work in making sure that we have these videos available for you each week. And we thank you for tuning in. We hope that the service is a blessing to you. And we hope that you'll come and join us in person uh, whenever you can. We're located at 3001 Queen City Avenue, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45238. We worship every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We'd love to see you. We'd love to meet you. And we hope you can come worship with us very soon. During our service today, we will be remembering our veterans. This, is, uh, this weekend is uh, our uh, observance of Veterans Day. And so uh, we'll have a moment in our service to thank our veterans and to remember them and honor them for their, their service to our nation. Now may God bless us and guide us as we worship together. Please join me for our responsive call to worship. Are you ready to worship? We believe, we believe that we are. Put away all of the cares and worries that keep you from hearing God's word. The cares and worries of the world have been put aside so that we may be truly ready. The Lord comes to you this day. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God, God for God's abiding presence and promise. Amen. Our first hymn is hymn number 67, O God, Our Help in Ages Past. years to come. Be thou our 
Let us pray together our prayer of invocation. Through the weak of stress and demands, we come to you this day, O Lord. Awaken us again to your comforting and loving presence in our lives. Help us to be open to the many ways in which you have called to us and sustained us. Make us ready to be of service to you. Amen. We are not always prepared to receive the gifts and blessings of God because we do not always look to God as our source of life and hope. Let us confess to God our sins and prepare ourselves for the good things that God provides. Please join me for our prayer of confession. O oh Lord, there never seems to be enough time to do all of the things that are demanded of us. Schedules become crowded. We live by the clock. We think that we are ready for all events that will come our way, but we are rarely ready for you. We would like you to come to us at a planned time so that we can fit you into our busy lives. Forgive us, Lord, for trying to make you a scheduled event. We have moved you to a time on our weekly calendars, yet you are the eternal God who has always loved us and been ready to receive us. Help us to learn that with you as our foundation, we can handle anything that comes our way. With you as our focus, all things pale in comparison. Let's look at the priorities in our lives and see where we have placed service to you. Amen. In the deepest darkness and in the times when all seems lost, we are not lost to God. God calls us to be ready for God's new kingdom. In all of this, God is with us. Amen. Amen. And now at this time, we would like to take a few moments and say thank you to all of our military veterans. We are very grateful to you for your service to our great land, and we believe that it's important that we take that moment to thank you. And we want to celebrate you and who you are and all that you've done to protect our nation, to keep us safe, and uh, we pray for God's greatest blessings on you. So thank you to all of our veterans on this Veterans Day. Uh, some of you uh, are carrying some difficult memories with you, and uh, we want to say a special prayer for you today as uh, we honor you and as we celebrate you. And so let us uh, bow together and uh, remember our veterans on this Veterans Day weekend. Gracious God, we are thankful for the men and women who have served in our armed forces, all of our veterans, and we remember them today members of our families, our friends, members of our community, those of our nation, people that we don't know, but we are grateful to them for their service. And we pray today, gracious God, that you would give them peace. We remember those who have served our nation, who carry with them the trauma of war and conflict. We pray for your healing presence in their lives. We ask that you would be very near to them. And we pray, gracious God, that you would give them peace. We thank you for those who have given the ultimate, made the ultimate sacrifice, and even given their lives in the service of our country. We pray that you would be near to their loved ones, and may they continue to rest in your loving and eternal care. Give them peace and grant peace to those who love them and remember them. We pray for those who are currently in the armed forces, and we pray that you would be very close to them and keep them safe. We thank you for each of them, and we thank you for their loved ones who remain at home and who support them and encourage them and who are there for them in their time of need. God, grant them your peace. 
We pray, Lord, for peace in our world, wherever there is conflict, wherever there are those who are fighting in wars and conflicts, we pray, Lord, that you would be near to them, and we pray that the Prince of Peace would prevail and that there would indeed be peace in our world. We pray, Lord, for the well-being of all people, men and women, children, all of those who are living with the terror of war, be near to them and grant them your peace. We pray, Lord, for peacemakers and for peacekeepers, all who seek to keep this world secure and free. We pray for your blessings. Gracious God, bless our veterans today. May they know that you are watching over them, and may they know how grateful we are for their service to our country. All of this we pray in the mighty name of Christ our Lord. Amen. And at this time, we come to our uh, moment of pastoral prayer. We'd like to invite you to bring any needs, concerns, and joys to worship today as we pray together. And if you have a prayer concern that you would like to share with our congregation, there is a link right below the video, and we'd like to invite you to use that link, fill out that form, and send it back to us, and we'll be happy to share your prayer concern with our congregation at our Sunday morning uh, worship service and also in our weekly email update with our congregation. Uh, let us continue to remember for the needs of our world, uh, remember the needs of our world, the needs of our community and our own needs as we go to God in this time of prayer. Oh Lord God, we are a stubborn and impatient people. We always want to know how things will end and how things will work out. We want to know what the schedule is. We want to know so that we can be ready. And yet we are reminded in our scripture today that we must be ready at all times for the good things that you have in store for us and for the opportunities that you place before us to be of service to you and others. Daily we are called to come before you in prayer and praise and daily we are challenged by your Holy Spirit to find ways to serve your people in your world. We'd still like to know when we need to have the oil for our lamps. And it is hard, Lord, because uh, we are not always very good at planning and preparing for all of the surprises that you have in store for us, the good gifts that you have in store for us. And so help us to place you at the center of our lives, seeking to daily prepare ourselves for your coming again in glory. As we have brought before you uh, today, Lord, our needs, our hopes, our uncertainties, and also our joys, we ask that you would be near to those who are dear to us. We ask for your healing love and blessing for those who are struggling. And we ask that you would be very close to each of us and help us as we seek your guidance and your presence in our lives each day. We know that with your love, all things are possible, O God. Give us such courage and perseverance that we may faithfully proclaim your love to all of creation and make us ready to receive you now 
in this place and wherever we may find ourselves. And now in these moments of silence, gracious God, we ask that you would receive the personal prayers that we offer to you this day. We offer all of these prayers spoken and unspoken to you, O God, and in the name of Jesus, our Lord, who taught us to pray with the prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading today is our psalm, Psalm 78, beginning at verse 1. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known, that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord, and his might, and the wonders that he has done. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God, and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments." And our second scripture reading is our gospel reading from Matthew, chapter 25, beginning at verse 1. Jesus says, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for your, our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You'd better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. Now while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I did not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of this God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, I was going to uh, start the sermon for today with a carpentry joke, but I wasn't sure if it would work. And did you hear about the actor who broke his leg on stage? He's still in the cast. And I wanted to buy a pair of camouflage pants, but I couldn't find any. Oh. Well, as you all know, our family recently experienced the joy of a wedding. 
our son Blake and daughter-in-law Hannah were married, uh, and we enjoyed the blessing of their ceremony and celebration following, and I had the honor of officiating their ceremony. And a few years ago, our older uh, daughter Christina and our son-in-law Jeff were married, and I also had the honor of officiating their ceremony as well. I was reminded both times, as I uh, always am uh, at weddings, of how much planning and preparation tends to go into weddings and rehearsals and wedding receptions. Weddings have always been joyful events, but weddings have not always looked like the weddings that we are accustomed to. In fact, depending on where you are in the world, wedding ceremonies and wedding celebrations look very different depending on the culture, the tradition, and the faith. In Jesus' day, a wedding celebration was planned, but there was an element of surprise to it. One of the customs was for the bridegroom to be accompanied by the bridesmaids to the home of the bride, and then the bridesmaids would accompany the bride and the groom to the home where the wedding would take place and where the wedding feast would be held afterward. We get a glimpse of this tradition in the parable that Jesus told. Jesus compares the kingdom of heaven to ten bridesmaids. Five of them, he says, were foolish, and five were wise. The first part of their job was to prepare for the arrival of the bridegroom so that they could journey with him to the home of the bride. They had some idea of when he might show up, but they wouldn't know for sure he could come at any time. And in this instance, he showed up at midnight. Someone shouted, look! The bridegroom's here. Come out and meet him. And so the bridesmaids who had dropped off to sleep waiting for the bridegroom arose and they began trimming their lamps so that they could make their way with the bridegroom to the home of the bride to uh, get her to take her to the wedding ceremony. Jesus draws a contrast between the two groups of young women. The first group, the first five, Jesus notes, brought their lamps with them as they waited for the bridegroom so that they would have what they needed to light their way as they accompanied the bride and the bridegroom. The other uh, uh, other group, uh, uh, but but they they didn't bring any extra oil. That was the, the problem that Jesus noted. They brought their lamps, but they didn't bring any extra oil. Jesus says that they were foolish. The other group, however, were wise. They took flasks of oil with them, and that way... If the bridegroom was delayed, they knew that they would have plenty of oil to light their lamps and safely make their way through the dark. Indeed, the bridegroom was delayed, but now that he had arrived, it was time for the celebration to begin. No more waiting. It was now time for the celebration to begin. As the young women got up and trimmed their lamps, those who had not brought any extra oil said to the young women who had prepared, Give us some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. No, came the reply, we can't do that. Otherwise, we will run out too, and we'll all be without enough oil. Go and buy more oil from the dealers. And that's what the unprepared young women did. But unfortunately, that meant that when the wedding celebration began, the doors were shut, and the unprepared women missed out on the festivities. They missed out on all of the joyful uh, events surrounding the wedding celebration. Now, what does all this mean for the kingdom of heaven? Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven is like these young women, some prepared and some were unprepared. Our tendency, some have noted, is to focus on the foolish, those that Jesus calls the foolish bridesmaids. We like to point to them excuse me, and use them to scold ourselves and to scold each other and to say that we need to be better prepared for the Lord's coming. And if we are not prepared, we will be like those foolish bridesmaids and will miss out on the blessings of Christ's coming. But it may be that we need to focus a bit more on the young women who were prepared, the five who brought with them plenty of oil to keep their lamps burning in case the bridegroom was delayed. These five young women are presented by Jesus as models for us to follow. Jesus is preparing his disciples then and now 
with instruction and insight on how to live and serve as his disciples, even though he will not be with them physically. Even though he would no longer be with them in the flesh, the work that he started and the ministry that he began would need to continue because he was commissioning them to carry it on, to carry on God's movement in the world, to carry on the transforming work that began with him. And while some in the early church expected Jesus to return at any moment, Jesus made it very clear that only God knows the day and the time when all of history will be fulfilled and God's world will be made new. That's all in God's hands, Jesus told us. But in the meantime, you and I, he said, are being called to be prepared. Jesus' followers were to carry on his work faithfully and with hope and to be prepared for that work that Christ was calling us to do. The parable of the ten bridesmaids suggests that it is important for the followers of Jesus to be prepared and to stay prepared, to carry on his work in this world. Those of us who are followers of Jesus, who are Jesus' representatives in the world, never know when new opportunities will present themselves for us to do the work of Christ. We never know when we might be called upon to represent Christ in our world and in our particular settings. And so we are called to be spiritually prepared and to remain spiritually prepared to be God's faithful people. Let's think for a moment about the five wise young women and what they did to prepare for the arrival of the bridegroom. The two th they did two things while they waited for the bridegroom. First, they made sure that they had plenty of oil. And second, they slept. These five wise young women demonstrate the importance of both action and rest. They acted because they did not know how long they would need to be equipped with lamp oil, and so they gathered enough to keep them going until the wedding celebration. They slept because they did not know what hour the celebration would begin. They knew that it might happen in the middle of the night, and so they slept while they waited because they knew they might be up for quite a while. Parents of newborn babies understand that when the baby sleeps, you'd better get some sleep as well, because you never know when you might get to sleep again. The wise young women understood that they needed to sleep while they could, because once the wedding feast began, they might not be sleeping for a while. So too, you and I need to seek that healthy spiritual balance in our lives. Like the wise young women, we need to be drawing on the spiritual resources of our lives, worship, study, prayer, fellowship, to keep us spiritually nurtured, spiritually healthy, and spiritually prepared to meet the challenges of the day. We need to balance our lives between rest and action, between prayer and sharing God's love through words and deeds and actions. There are a lot of spiritually depleted folks out there, and too often we find ourselves spiritually depleted as well. There are many demands on our lives, and sometimes we find ourselves feeling used up. Someone has shared the following scenario for us to consider. Ever had one of those days when things are hectic, you haven't had time to think ahead to what's needed for the day, and simply had to go forward with what you had? Maybe you forgot to finish your homework and just had to go with the minimum of what you'd done, which you knew wasn't going to be sufficient. Maybe you forgot to do a needed report for work that was due that morning and were rushing to get to work only to forget your lunch and the gym clothes you needed afterward. Maybe you procrastinated on a project and now you're destined to do it at the last minute, lacking some of the material you really needed to make it work. Maybe you forgot about a large bill and didn't have the resources to cover it. Maybe you stayed up late the night before a breakfast celebration and ended up sleeping right over it. If any of these scenarios make you cringe, you're not alone. We've all been there, haven't we? We've all been in those moments, those moments when it seems like we just don't have enough to make it all work. We don't have enough of that inner strength, that those inner resources to make it all work, to make life fit together the way we want it to fit together. Indeed, we are not alone, and it is important that among all the spiritual resources we need, 
we remember that we are, each of us, a spiritual resource for one another. We are more than just consumers who buy things. We are more than just the employees of those we work for. We are more than just cogs in a machine. We are God's children, God's creation made in God's image. Jesus' ministry was a ministry of healing and reconciliation. God became flesh to show us that God is making all things new. God is not throwing away the world or discarding the world. God is redeeming and renewing life and renewing the world. As Cheryl Lindsay writes, the bridegroom comes to get married. Jesus came to repair the rift and dissolve the disconnect between heaven and earth. Jesus declares in the Gospel of John, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Sisters and brothers in Christ, we are called to be spiritually prepared, for life demands much of us. God does not want it, us to be defeated. God does not want us to crumble under the weight of life's challenges. God is calling us to draw from the rich and abundant well of goodness and spiritual blessing that God provides. Donald Defner tells this story. There was once an absent-minded professor who became so absorbed in his work that he forgot the simplest details. One morning his wife said, Now Henry, remember, we are moving today. Here, I'm putting this note in your pocket. Don't forget. Well, the day passed by, and the man came home to his house. He entered the front door and found the place empty. Distraught, he walked out to the curb, and he sat down. And a young boy walked up to him, and he asked him, Little boy, do you know the people who used to live here? The boy replied, Sure, Dad, and Mother told me you'd forget. Well, how often do we become so absorbed in life, like the foolish bridesmaids, who in the demands and expectations of this world, Donald Defner asks, that we forget who we are and whose we are and where we are going. We're not alone. And we all sometimes find ourselves spiritually depleted. But sisters and brothers, there is a well, an endless well of spiritual resources that you and I can draw from so that we can be prepared, so that we can be prepared for life each day with all of the challenges that life brings. We do not need to run out of oil for our lamps because God is providing all that we need. We need to see and receive those spiritual resources available to us. So let us be prepared because God is providing exactly what we need. Amen. I'd like to invite you to join me in affirming our faith as we say these words from the Kansas City Statement of Faith from the Congregational Churches, one of our United Church of Christ predecessor denominations. Please join me. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, goodness and love, and in Jesus Christ, His Son, our Lord and Savior, who for us and for our salvation lived and died and rose again and liveth evermore, and in the Holy Spirit, who taketh of the things of Christ and revealeth them to us, renewing, comforting, and inspiring the souls of men. We are united in striving to know the will of God as taught in the Holy Scriptures and in our purpose to walk in the ways of the Lord made known or to be made known to us. We hold it to be the mission of the Church of Christ to proclaim the gospel to all mankind, exalting the worship of the one true God and laboring for the progress of knowledge, the promotion of justice, the reign of peace, and the realization of human brotherhood. Depending as did our fathers upon the continued guidance of the Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth, we work and pray for the transformation of the world into the kingdom of God, and we look with faith for the triumph of righteousness and the life everlasting. We believe in the freedom and responsibility of the individual soul and the right of private judgment. We hold to the autonomy of the local church and in its independence of all ecclesiastical control. 
we cherish the fellowship of the churches united in districts, state, and national bodies for counsel and cooperation in matters of common concern, while affirming the liberty of our churches and the validity of our ministry, we hold to the unity and Catholicity of the Church of Christ and will unite with all its branches in hearty cooperation and will earnestly seek, as far as in us lies, that the prayer of our Lord for his disciples may be answered that they all may be one. Our next hymn is hymn number 354, Seek Ye First. As the people of ancient days said to Joshua, let us proclaim that we will serve the Holy One. Let us choose this day to serve with all of the gifts and resources that we have been given to the glory of God and in generous hope for the world. Please join me for our prayer of dedication. Blessing upon blessing has been given to us, O Lord, from your great bounty. Now we return these gifts to you. Bless these gifts and the lives that they represent and cause them to work for you in this world that you have loaned to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our final hymn is number 610, Living for Jesus. Strong. 
Thank you for joining us today. We hope that the service has been a blessing to you and we hope it helps you prepare for the week ahead. We hope you'll come back and join us again very soon. and We look forward to worshiping with you again. Sisters and brothers, God has called and chosen you to be witnesses to hope and peace in God's world. Go in peace and this same healing, reconciling love and peace will be with you. Go and serve the Lord your God in all that you do. Go in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Amen.